Welcome everyone to um, the last of our adaptive and authoring learning series uh, for Affordable Learning Georgia. Thank you for coming in today. Um, be sure to have your microphone muted until you're ready to speak uh, as WebEx will pick up office conversations and barking dogs and such if not. Um, I'm Jeff Gallant. I'm the program manager for Affordable Learning Georgia. And in our new request for proposals for our textbook transformation grants, which I will uh, put into the chat, we have a, an added influence on both creating new content and transforming uh, pre-existing content in a big way, including using authoring and adaptive software. I would like to introduce uh, Petra Coleman Sanchez from Newton Learning. Uh, who's going to talk about Newton, an adaptive platform that I've uh, talked with her about recently. It's been really interesting. So I will pass presenter privileges to her. Oh, thank you, Jeff. I uh, appreciate being here this morning, uh, this afternoon. And I'm uh, um, the in Institutional Partnerships Consultant for Newton. And I am excited to share with you today um, uh, a little bit about our company as well as the solution uh, that we're providing in the adaptive learning world. I know we only have uh, one attendee, so maybe I, I thought we could make the most of this time and make this very collaborative since uh, Dr. Barrera, I'm assuming, if you wouldn't mind, maybe introduce yourself. That way we I can target this uh, um, presentation just for you today. <laughs> Maybe not a mic. Okay, can you hear us? Yes? Okay, well, I will continue with the presentation. And uh, um, starting off, I would like to share with you um, who is Newton, what is Newton's um, adaptive uh, learning approach. Uh, I prepared a little bit of a demo of uh, what our solution looks like, uh, share with you our implementation models, and then also please, again, since this is a small group, feel free to ask any uh, questions uh, during the presentation. So who is Newton? Our mission is to bring personalized learning oh, to the world. Uh, Petra? Yes. You, you're not sharing yet. Oh, I'm not. Oh, no. oops. oops. Something went wrong then. Oh, no. Is something just not popping up? Um, I got kicked out. Sorry. I'm joining again. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. I mean, I haven't seen you kicked out yet. It's, I cannot, 
I'm having some difficulties. It says here you already have one meeting in progress. I'm trying to rejoin it and I'm not able to get back in. Yeah, it, it seems like the application's running because you're you're in here and I can hear you. Hmm. Okay, I can see it now. All right, let's okay. see. Sorry about that. I am not seeing the, oh, I have to. Can you see it now? Um, not yet, but it took a bit to load the last time too. There it is. So I, I'll start again. <laughs> so um, I prepared uh, for us to talk today about who is Newton, what is Newton's adaptive learning approach, and a brief demo, and uh, discuss some of our implementation models, as well as please feel free to ask any questions at any time. Uh, who is Newton? Newton's mission is to bring personalized learning to the world. We are uh, the world's leading adaptive learning company headquartered in New York City. Uh, we have invested over 100 million in building a data platform that powers adaptive learning environments. Uh, we have been around since 2008, though you may or may not have heard of us, and that's because until this year we have been the adaptive engine powering other providers' products. Um, uh, think of it like Intel provides the brains that powers computers. Newton has been providing the adaptive intelligence that powers other people's content. Um, through these third-party relationships, more than 10 million students are currently using Newton. And internationally, we are in every continent but Antarctica. And that translates to 16 billion recommendations that we are delivering. Um, so we understand our company, uh, we understand the common challenges that we hear from uh, other campuses and our company has a social mission to provide the best learning tools for all. We have an open site that anyone can access. Uh, this is all K-12 content and users are from around the world. Uh, we, what our class, this is probably very familiar to you. Uh, this is what our classroom looks like today. Every student comes with a different background and knowledge level. Uh, and um, the shift from print to digital is exciting because it allows for greater access and enables for the first time personalization at scale, which is uh, Newton's focus. Um, and we've been addressing these challenges for the last eight plus years. So what we want to show you today is what we've built uh, in, as a new course solution directly for institutions on our adaptive platform. And our goal is to improve learning outcomes, accelerate completion, persistence, and reduce cost through a textbook replacement model. Um, we, although these core solutions uh, are new to the, for us, for the market, Newton's adaptive technology as a trusted platform. Late in 2011 or early 2012, we built a math readiness course on our Newton platform for Arizona State University. And the problem that ASU was trying to solve was that students were admitted for college level math, but were not ready and instead of sending them away, we build a developmental math uh, course. When ASU started using Newton Powered Adaptive Math Readiness course, the pass rates rose by 17%, uh, course withdrawals dropped by 56%, and 45% 45, 45 of students finished four weeks early. That translated over four years in a $10 million uh, savings because uh, ASU was not losing these students. I would like to share with you also a brief video from ASU on these results. I think it's been well demonstrated that nationwide we have large issues with students coming out of high school, going into college unprepared for the level of math that will be necessary for them to be successful. If you're willing to try to educate everyone who has the opportunity and the potential to 
be a college graduate, you have to take extraordinary steps to make sure that you're doing everything you can. So, well, one thing that I would really like to see change or move in the next next couple of years is really educating faculty, students about ways to best engage in that activity of using new, new emerging technologies like Newton to really increase or advance their learning in the structured classroom environment. I'm going to teach math differently to five all the students this semester in a completely different modality, in a completely different classroom focus versus technology focus. There are a lot of moving parts. You have to coordinate everything from the facilities to the instructional designers, the faculty, and so my role was really just to keep all of those efforts moving so that we could get this done in a time. The most important thing is getting everybody on board, understanding the mission, understanding the motivation, and understanding how you can make students more I think technology has already come to a point where it's allowing students and professors who are proficient with technology to really incorporate new and take learning to a whole new level. My name is Carrie Barlow. I'm the VP of Operations for ASU Online at Arizona State. University. My name is Sean Hobson. I'm the Instructional Design Manager with ASU Online here at Arizona State University. Sorry about the slow connection. <laughs> so, um, how are we different? Um, and how does that difference impact learning outcomes? Um, we understand that the landscape of adaptive learning can be confusing, and there are uh, a lot of products on the market today they claim to be adaptive, individualized, or personalized. Um, uh, we uh, have uh, built on our platform, and we think it's important to define uh, uh, what we mean by adaptive learning and to understand the difference in our approach uh, and why we believe Newton's approach to be the most effective to, adapt to adaptive learning for all. So there are really two ways to deliver an adaptive learning experience an easy way and a hard way. Uh, the easy way is to build predetermined tracks in a course that allows groups of students to go down different paths based on subject matter experts' best guess and what the learner should work on next. So we call this uh, predetermined adaptive, and it's not really based on real data. And almost every adaptive product on the market today falls into the predetermined adaptive bucket. Um, Newton uh, chose the hard way because we have always believed in order to deliver the most effective learning that the content needs to adapt in real time based on data, which uh, we call real-time real adaptive. Uh, and that's a hard thing to build. Uh, Newton's solution is algorithm-based and captures everything you're doing uh, to make a decision about the next, be next best piece of content to recommend. Uh, similar to what Netflix uses data to suggest uh, a movie you might like or the way Amazon makes a recommendation on what your next purchase should be. Um, we deliver the right piece of content at the right time for every single learner on every single concept they need to master in a course, and we do this in real time. And the reason it can work so well in education is that there is many more data points that can be used to inform the decision on what to deliver next. It, it, this is what uh, a light adaptive approach visually resembles, essentially using a decision tree to deliver learning. And it has the following limitations, as you can see here. Um, it uh, means you have a contained uh, it contains a closed content pool. Student, students could exhaust the content, and the content is also not calibrated, meaning we have no idea 
uh, no data on the content and thus no real data on student proficiency. Uh, these solutions are based on a simple if-then logic and not based on individual needs. Uh, the result is better than a static resource, but in the end, these are can generalized recommendations. This visual gives you a sense of what Newton has built. Uh, we built our content in something called a knowledge, knowledge graph. Uh, we tag the content at a very atomic level. All these dots represent an atomic content, and they're also interconnected. Uh, we also crowdsource among all students on our system, and each recommendation is crowdsourced among the minimum 10 million previous students. Uh, we can move individual students around this graph in a way that it is individualized to just them. And we do that by measuring their proficiency on every single concept of a course. And, deliver, and then we deliver them the appropriate assessment or instruction based on what we know about them. Uh, and we do that by calibrating every single piece of content on the Newton platform. Once the machine has calibrated the content and we know exactly to what percentile a given piece of content teaches to, we can then use that to estimate student proficiency on every single concept within a course. And we call this approach uh, continuous adaptivity. Uh, the Newton approach is also better because it contains an open content pool. Uh, we can remediate you back as far as you need, so content is not exhausted. And finally, Newton benefits from the network effect. The more students and data we have, the better the system gets for everyone. So here you can see what goes into a single Newton recommendation. It not only takes into account the student knowledge state and goals, but also measures and identifies student response and behavior and provides data-driven content recommendation. For example, it will identify the areas of the student's strengths and weaknesses and where, we, and where there is a need for remediation. PACE means, for example, the rate at which they are taking in content and time means the time it takes to answer the question. Helps us de detect spamming related uh, to engagement. And proficiency will measure how well each student understands each concept and their ability to apply that knowledge. So how are we different and how does that difference impact learning? Again, this is all tied into one visual aid uh, you can see on, this, on the left side uh, the algorithms that determine the instructional and assessment value of each piece of content uh, for the content calibration. And then on the right, uh, the proficiency estimation, the algorithm that determines how well each student understands each, con each concept and their ability to apply that knowledge. And then the engine makes the continuous real-time recommendation, also algorithm-based, uh, which provides the best piece of instructional assessment content to learners to drive the highest outcomes. The benefit is to the instructor receiving real-time analytics that, so that the instructor can focus their teaching on each student's learning gap. And serving 10 of millions of students, each with their own learning profile. And that can also be used for any future learning experience across multiple grade levels and domains. For the first time, students will get instruction and remediation for exactly what they need, regardless of what course they are taking. For example, if they're taking an economics course, but what they are struggling with is an algebra concept, Newton will offer the student instruction and practice so that he or she masters the prerequisites learning objective, even if it is from another domain. So where does our content come from? It comes from a number of sources, and all of it gets curated by our large staff of content curator. We have a content team of, uh, a large content team made up of ex-faculty members and specific subject matter experts. 
and all they do all day long is curating the best content. We have agreements with a number of smaller publishers like Flat World Knowledge to use their content, and we also have a license agreement with OpenStax. We also curate content from all over the web, and in places where we think we might need more content, we, even, we will even build some ourselves. As you can imagine, in order to deliver the type of experience I described, you need a lot of content options to deliver the students to, to students in our course. Um, and um, our, uh, our, a lot of content delivered to the students in our course will contain three times the amount of content and 20 times uh, the amount of assessment as a textbook. Now I will share with you a brief demo of what our solution looks like. This is the dashboard that you can enter within your LMS and either from a student experience or from a teacher experience. We'll start on the student side. As soon as I enter my LMS, I can see my upcoming assignments. I can also see my other activities in, inside my LMS. Once I click on my first assignment, it will provide me with an overview of the course, the professor, the due date. It will also provide me what the learning objectives are, how long it will take, um, and a little bit about what Newton is. I can start immediately working on my assignment, or I can see some of the sample content for this, for this assignment. Once I start on the assignment, I, I will get into my workspace. Um, again, I will receive an overview, sample questions, and I can be immediately begin answering my first question. As soon as I answer my first question, I will always receive immediate feedback, whether it's right or wrong. Once I can, I can review that in any modality. Based on my first answer, I received, I did that one wrong, I will now get the next best piece of instruction. And I can answer that. Once I received that and I did that one right, again, I receive immediate feedback. This one is in the form of a video on why this was correctly answered. As you may have noticed, the analytics will start change and take effect as I interact with the Newton engine. And it will estimate and predict how long it will take for me to complete the assignment um, and how many questions are uh, to be answered in order to move forward. At any point, I have a I'm stuck opportunity button that I can press, and I can always find additional materials um, and just click by show me. And based on my previous, uh, as you can see here, we uh, moved ahead, and uh, it's predicting that I am close to completing my assignment. I answer this next question, and I completed my assignment. I got it correct, and I get my gold star. Uh, I can move on to the next assignment. I can review what I have learned, the learning objectives of this assignment. At any point, I can go back and practice. And this is my learning summary. Um, I can see how many I've gotten correct incorrect, and I can also go and filter just by looking at the instructions that I reviewed. Any of these are easily clickable and filtered by uh, clicking on them. I will now show you the teach, uh, teacher user experience. Very similar uh, look and feel the instructor, instructor has uh, the opportunity to have multiple sections. I can click easily from one to the other. I can see my course, my name, uh, the time frame of the course, the number of students, um, and the number of assignments. Each box represents an assignment. Each assignment has two to five learning objectives 
And at a glance, I can see the students' progress in each of these assignments and their due date. To manage my students, I can uh, easily invite them via email or this unique URL, or at the beginning of class, we will uh, set up the students inside uh, the course. To view what the instructor um, experience is on this particular assignment, I click on properties of real numbers and orders of operation. I can now see within the learning objectives who, who are the students that are completing, those are that are struggling. If I click on just the struggling, I can see those eight students that are struggling with being familiar with the symbols of operations, equality, and inequality. And again, going back to the assignment in my entire roster, I can see that 21 have completed, three are in progress, four are struggling. And the way we define struggling is that we don't believe based on their proficiency and the due date that the students, these students will complete their assignment on time and two have not started. Again, if I wanted to just see the four that are struggling, I can easily see um, where they are, how many questions they've gotten correct, incorrect, how much time they've spent on this particular assignment. And if I just want to see Andrew, I can click on just one particular student uh, for one-on-one -on -one time or office hours or tutoring. I can look at his progress summary and again, I can filter if I want to just see his incorrect answers and even click on the ones that the, the one that we did earlier and click on the question. I can see how he answered it and what instruction he received uh, in order to move forward. That gives you a high level overview of the, um, the solution. I'll pause here real quick for any questions. No? Okay. So how do we implement our um, solution? We have our Newton support model includes a implementation architect that's aligned to the faculty member who will coordinate the integration uh, timeline, milestones, project management. He, she will also uh, work on uh, transitioning the syllabus, aligning Newton assignments to the topics of the syllabus of the faculty member, and any other strategy and socialization with key stakeholders. Uh, we also provide proper training. We have uh, product and classroom implementation workshops for, for faculty and administrators. Uh, product and recommendation, recommended workshops for students. Uh, we have first first day of class in per person training, uh, WebEx training, pre-course orientation videos and PowerPoints, and how to get started with Newton support documentation. Uh, we are LTI compliant and uh, uh, we also have a 99.94 uptime and our Customer service, we have a inside the uh, product feedback button that provides a screenshot of the question that the student or faculty member has that provides that directly to our US-based uh, customer service. Uh, so we really approach our implementation uh, through a concierge service. There are several different implementation models we have uh, seen across the country. We have the complementary blended emporium. We have it where adaptive components are integrated into the daily plan, but does not provide the ent entire instruction for the class. It can be used as a supplementary adaptive homework uh, or extra practice. Um, the adaptive solution could be part of daily activities in class, but not being graded. Um, or where we see the most success if, it's if it becomes a core component. And even there, we've seen different applications, self-paced, bridge program. It aligns very well to a company, com com 
competency-based <laughs> education model, and uh, we've also seen it in flipped classrooms. Or we can uh, see a combination of all of the above. Some of our early pilot success has been that we issue pre and post surveys for students to evaluate how much students, for example, like math in general, uh, to address the math anxiety, some questions also to help further develop us, uh, to, to develop us the, the product. Uh, we do uh, schedule also feedback session with, with the faculty at the end of each course. And we have ongoing uh, support by our implementation architect. Um, our, we have ongoing status meetings to report updates on overall program launches, and we also provide monthly webinars to learn about our new product features since we are iterating every two weeks into our new, uh, into our new features based on the feedback we have received so far. And we have a wonderful uh, data science team where, which can provide reports on um, with deep analysis of student progress with respect to new technology, which can be provided at the end um, after completion of one, at least one semester. So this is a summary of what Newton offers. We offer three times more content, curated and reviewed OER, a detailed analysis analytics on class and student performance, individualized learning for every student, a cross-discipline view of students' strengths and weaknesses, an affordable solution that students can access on any device, and stability and support. We believe we're ahead of the curve in several of these areas. Um, we have cross-domain recommendations, accurate measures of content efficiency, accurate measures of student success, and success predictors. What that means for the students, uh, we, um, it raises performance by providing development on problem areas. It assists in preparation by recommending the next best activity for each student to work on in real time based on their past activity. It inspires progress by focusing on key objectives and efficient paths to mastery. For the instructor, the feedback that we received is that it minimizes busy, busy work by, crunch, by Newton crunching the numbers and providing actionable analytics. And it makes the instruction more efficient by allowing instructors to di differentiate by giving you high level detailed views of student performance broken down by learning objectives. Here's our current uh, timeline, courses and timeline. Uh, what's available and what we piloted so far in the math and science, as well as on the business and economic side. And we're also scaling quickly into humanities and social sciences, college readiness, and professional and career. I, I thought I'd conclude with a few faculty testimonials uh, from ASU that I hear from our faculty side. I'll pause for you to review some of those. And also on the student testimonials. Some of the uh, uh, additional, there we are ahead, um, that not only are we connecting the courses, but we're also connecting campus. Uh, in essence, becoming a data analytics LMS. Uh, again, the issue ASU was uh, facing that uh, ASU is getting different data from different providers, very difficult to measure the efficacy around content and student gains. Again, these, is, these are future uh, data dashboards that we're um, starting to build uh, to measure the instructional value uh, of not just our open educational resources, but also content across multiple providers. Um, this is not just a rating of an atomic piece of content, but also in relation to the piece of content that they're using in combination with the other content. 
Uh, so we will provide you with data on whether it provides the most instructional value. Proficiency gain is the average mastery um, gain for the student per content. How much are the students learning? What is the statistical psychometric, psychometric proficiency gain every time a student does something online or over course of, for all students? Really what you want to know is, you know, what is the lift that I'm getting? It's a good information when you look at the cost of content providers. If someone is um, coming to propose, uh, you should always ask, you know, what is the profession, proficiency measure? And the only way that you can tell this is by telling you what the proficiency gain is. We spend a lot of time measuring gap reduction. And we understand it's easier to get a BB to an A student. It's hard to move a WDF to success. So how well is this course serving our low performing students who are most at risk? Uh, the big barrier courses take two, three times to remediate and many students run out of financial aid. We're very interested in lowering that gap reduction and making students successful. And these are just additional um, dashboards that a professor can review to see how his or her low and high performing students are doing. And students do run out of content. So because we run through your LMS, if an instructor would get a content warming, if they wanted Newton to supply that content, it, go, it would go right through the LMS as an assignment. It would just come right in and an instructor would just say yes. So this is a very good um, measure to see where you are uh, in terms of your content. And there are also some surprising uh, content connections when you start thinking about students across the general education course area you find that there are some interesting connections. Uh, these, for example, there are about 150 flags in English as a third, second language that testing companies use as a diagnostic for undeclared non-native speakers. Uh, for example, if you asked a, a non-native speaker um, to state the difference between simplify and solve, there are a couple of flags that they hit if um, they try to write that out in a paragraph form. And we can identify and serve them up rem remediation for non-native speakers. Uh, so the power of Newton pays attention to where students are coming from. And that leads me for open question or comments. Well, we don't have any in chat yet. Uh, Dr. Barrera, do you have any questions? Okay, well, thank you. I appreciate the time to present to you today. And if there are any further questions in the future, please don't hesitate to contact me. And thank you, Petra, for um, for doing this webinar today. Um, if you are watching the archive, and I'm hoping that a lot of you do, um, feel free to send me any questions at jeff.gallant at usg.edu. Um, if you want me to pass those on to anyone at Newton, I can totally do that. Or if you have any questions about our textbook transformation grants, I'll be able to help you out with those. Uh, thank you all for attending, and thank you, uh, Petra, for this informative presentation. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a good day. You too.